Okay, Assalamualaikum and also good morning. Okay, hari ini kita akan sentuh slide yang terakhir. Okay, dan ini adalah berkaitan dengan PID controller. Yesterday we have looked into the uh, parameter design utilizing the uh, root locus. Okay. Dan hari ini kita akan pergi specifically kepada PID controller. Okay. I will explain what is the PID controller. Okay. This is in section 7.6 in your books. Okay. Of course, your knowledge from the earlier chapter will be helpful. Okay. For you. Okay. PID controller. One form of the controller widely used in industrial process control is the term the three term PID controller ok so basically when you talk about the control system ok most of the industry are implementing this type of controller ok to control the uh, uh, their system ok so that's why you need to know what is basically the PID controller okay although there are many more advanced uh, controller but this PID basically will be utilized by most of the industry this controller has a, a transfer function GC as a function of S equal to a constant KP Okay, a constant KP is basically the constant for the proportional, the term P here, plus the constant KI. Okay, the constant KI is for the term of the integrals. Okay, and why it is integral? Because here we multiply with 1 over S. Okay, the constant Ki we multiply with 1 over S. That's why we call it as the uh, integral constant. And then plus with the Kd. Kd is basically is a differential constant. Okay, and we multiply with the S because S is equal to D over dt. Okay, the differential with time. And since we know that the GC is basically the block coming after the error signal that is from the comparator. Okay, because the error signal that come out from the comparator, we will multiply with the block GC. Right. Okay. So basically, as if later on that we will multiply this constant with the error. So what actually is that when we do that, we have the error signal, we multiply with the KP, that means we are amplifying the error signal. Okay? So that's why this is called as a proportional. Okay? Because we are amplifying the the error signal, okay, and then for this case, for the ki, basically we will from the error signal, okay, we take the integrals, okay. That's why we need to multiply with one over s. We take the integrals, and then that integral we multiply with the constant ki. Okay, and then for the uh, derivative, basically we take the error signal and we take the derivative upon the t, the time. Okay, where basically in the s domain we multiply by s. Okay, and then multiply with the constant kd. Okay, so basically now. The controller, okay, 
basically will be uh, we have uh, suggesting an output okay to the process which are based on the proportional part of the error and then the integral part of the error and also the derivative part of the error okay and each one actually will have different effect okay that's why we need the combination of these three that's why we just sum all of them okay later on we will see okay, that effect later on okay so the three term controller is called a PID controller because it contain a proportional and integrals and a derivative term represented by KP, KI and KD respectively okay okay uh, the only thing the transfer function of the derivative term okay just now I show you it's only KD multiplied multiply by S okay but in actual it is actually KD multiplied by S divided by tau D multiplied by S plus 1 the only thing that tau d is usually is very very small okay that's why a small number just plus one is as if similar to almost is similar to one so basically just similar to kd multiplied by s divided by one okay that's why in the uh, equation that we have before basically this term is neglected okay the tau d because it is very small Okay. Uh, with that, the PID, if we set the constant KD equal to zero, the derivative constant equal to zero, then we have the proportional plus integral. So this will become another controller. Uh, instead of PID, we have only PI controller. So the GC will become like this because when the KD is equal to zero, so it's only KP plus KI divided by S. If uh, when the KI is set equal to zero, okay, we will have the GC will become KP plus KD multiplied by S. Okay, because the KI will be zero and then divided by s basically will become zero as well so the equation will become this and this controller is called as proportional plus derivative controller okay instead of the id okay the only thing the kp is always not zero okay so that's why uh, normally we need the kp okay that's why there is no uh, controller called as integral plus derivative controller okay because normally the KP is needed okay if we look again the uh, transfer function for the uh, PID controller where GCS is equal to KP plus KI divided by S plus KD multiplied by S of course if we want all of them having a numerator the same 1 over S so this one we need to multiply with the S okay which become KP multiplied by S divided by S and then this one will become KD multiplied by S square divided by S so we have equation like this okay and basically the numerator here okay you can divide this uh, you can uh, factor the KD if you pick factor the KD basically uh, here will become KP divided by KD and then B will become the KI divided by KD okay so if we do that, do that we can factor the KD out here okay and if you have the second order equation like this basically we know we can find the roots of it okay where 
you will get two zero basically. Okay. So actually, when we are implementing a PID controller, what is actually we are doing? Okay. Basically, we are introducing the, to the system. Okay. One pole located at origin, right? And then two zero, okay? And this two zero is basically is a complex conjugate, okay? Two zero which are complex and conjugate. So that's basically what we we, we are doing when we designing a controller by implementing a PID controller. We are adding to the system a pole located at origin and then complex uh, a pair of complex zero. And then basically, we have the uh, constant KD okay, as the gain. Okay, so that is the implication when we are implementing this constant okay in the equation and if you look at the s plane you will notice that uh, let's look at the examples okay and again we recall back that a root locus begin begin at the poles and and at the zeros okay the only thing if we don't have enough zero the zero will be located at infinity okay if we have a system as shown in this figure okay we have a closed loop system where we have the process here and we need to design a controller here okay and the process having a transfer function like this gs is equal to 1 divided by s plus 2 divided by s plus 3 you need to design this controller the gc the easiest way to design is to design a pid controller okay since we know that most of the industry are utilizing uh, accepting the pid controller okay so for this case uh, maybe what we can do is that when we design a PID controller, okay, we need to introduce a pole located at origin and also we need to introduce a complex zero located at minus Z1 and also minus Z2. The only thing we need to decide what is the value of Z1 and Z2. For this case, maybe we just select the location of the Z1 the zeros and Z2 which is equal to negative 3 plus and minus negative 1J so now to look at the effect of the PID we need to see the pole and zero at the S plane okay so just now with the current system uh, with the system with the process okay you know your process having a Equation, uh, equation of the transfer function like this 1 divided by S plus S okay and then divided by S plus uh, S plus 2 divided by S plus 3 okay from this one basically you know that if you draw a root locus you will have two poles okay one is located at S equal to negative 2 Another one is located at S equal to negative 3. Okay. Initially, if we ignore the GC, we just let the GC equal to 1. What will happen with your root locus? Since you have only two poles located at S equal to minus 2 and S equal to minus 3, of course, you will have a segment of the locus on the real axis between negative 2 to negative 3 is it right okay and of course because this is pole so the 
locker start from here, come out from here, and also come out from here. So you meet together somewhere here, right? So you should you can calculate the breakaway point. And since you don't have any zero, what will happen? Okay, it will go to the zero at the infinities following the asymptote, right? And since you have only the two poles and no zero, so basically you have two asymptotes. Okay, and when you have two asymptotes, basically one of them is plus 90 degree, the other one is negative 90 degree. Okay, and you find the breakaway point somewhere here, and if you calculate the center of the asymptote also, maybe somewhere here, you can calculate it. Okay, later on by yourself. So what you what happened? The root lockers, one of them come up from here, uh, reaching the breakaway point, and then one of them will go up, and then the other one come out from here, and then it will go down. Just with the transfer function of the process, if you want to pick the dominant roots, okay, the dominant root only can lie on the existing root locus. But if, for example, this root locus is a partly fall into the area of the specification and then you are lucky. Okay? You don't need to add the you don't need to add the the controller. That means the GC you can just let it equal to one. Okay? And then you just need to find the location of the only. But in some cases, if you find that uh, having the root lockers for the system uh, with the GC equal to 1, where the root lockers doesn't enter into the area of the specification, okay? So what you need to do, okay? That's why you need to add a controller because if you add the controller, you will change your root locus. For example, in this case, when we add the PID, okay, when we add the PID, what happened here? Okay, we add a pole which is located at origin. That's why we will have this pole. And then we add this complex a pair of complex uh, zero, okay, which is this one and this one. And because of that, if you draw back your root locus after you add one pole at origin and two complex zero, okay, what you see here that since here in the real axis now you have three uh, roots, okay. So there is a segment between an odd and even, okay, and there is no segment here, and then another segment here, okay, going toward infinity. And then after that, you can calculate the uh, asymptote center, and if you calculate the asymptote center, maybe we find that the, maybe we find somewhere the location of the asymptote center. But the only thing is that now, your equation, you have three poles and two zero. So the difference is only one. When the difference is only one, the asymptote is, locate, is only one, which is located at 180 degree. So the asymptote is only that way. But looking at the direction of the locus, this one will come out here, this one will come out here, this one will come out here and go to the asymptote there should be a breakaway point here. Okay, you can calculate the breakaway point to get precisely where the location it is break out. Okay, and one this is break out. Okay, one is going up, one is going down. But since there is no asymptote is nearby because this is far away. Okay, so what it do, one of these will go to the zero. And then the other one will go to the, the other zero. Okay? And you can calculate the angle of arrivals. Okay? Toward the zero. Okay? And you can know exactly the direction when it's approaching the zero. 
Okay, and then roughly you can sketch from this breakaway point to that uh, arrow that you have for the angle of arrivals. Okay, and finally, when we have the sketch of our root lockers, we will see that our root lockers is now completely different. Right? Okay, and now if you compare with the specification, okay, maybe now with the different root lockers, maybe your root lockers already fall in the uh, area of the specification. Okay, and then it is easily you can choose the roots, okay, located on the on the root lockers and also inside the area of the uh, specification okay and actually when we are selecting the location of the roots on the root lockers we are actually selecting the value of the KD so with that basically we will finalize our all our parameter because from that equation basically we will know what is the KD we know what is the Ki, we know also what is the Kp. You can derive back from the earlier equation before. So as the gain Kd of the controller is increased, the complex root approach the zero. What we said here, that when you choose the root somewhere here, here and here, okay, it is the value of the Kd is almost equal to zero because at the poles basically the KD is equal to zero but as you increase the KD basically the KD will be approaching the zero okay so that means if you select here basically the value of the KD is is very very big for selecting the value of the KD actually if we select the KD nearer to zero is better because why because later on we wanted that these two roots which is complex and conjugate to dominate okay because if you're looking at this there will be three lockers okay so there will be two roots here and then the other root will be here right of course looking at this position basically uh, the complex conjugate will be more dominant okay and if we push it nearer to the zeros the system will be more stable is it right because it will be farther away from the imaginary axis so that's how we will use the the root lockers to determine the value of the kd and of course if we have this uh, characteristic equation okay basically we will have the after adding the PID controller we will have our transfer function like this so basically uh, what is the effect when we adding the PID controller okay basically the PID controller will improve the system response okay the, uh, the response of the system will be attractive okay and one point that we will get is that the percentage of our shoot to a step input will be less than 2%. The percentage of our shoot will be less than 2%. So how nice it is. Although we have the overshoot, but the overshoot is very little. And not only that, the steady state error for a step input will be zero. So if we apply the PID, definitely the steady state error will be zero. Because why? Because we adding the integral. Okay, the function of the integral is to make the steady state become zero. And then we will have the settling time will be approximately one second with the PID as well. Okay, this is actually due to the derivative term. Okay, the derivative term will make the settling time less. Okay, so approximately you can get uh, less than one second. So, uh, that's basically uh, we always wanted, okay? If a shorter 
uh, settling time is desired then we select the Z1 and Z2 to lie further left in the left hand S plane and set the KD to drive the route nearer to the complex zero okay what that mean if for example with the existing PID also you find that settling time is still uh, long okay so what you can do because you remember okay when we decide the this the location of this zero there is no rule that we use okay we just pick a point somewhere here okay so that's mean that this zero we can adjust more if we want the system to be more stabilized uh, stable and it will respond faster okay we need to uh, get this route the dominating route will be more further from the imaginary axis so what we can do the location of the uh, complex po uh, complex zero okay we can select it more to this side so if we move it to this side so later on when we adjusting the KD we can push it more toward this side okay so it will be farther away uh, from the imaginary axis okay and then that will make your system will respond faster even easily you can make it much much less than one second so that's why the beauty of the this is the beauty of the PID controller PID controller is used a lot in industrial processes many industry processes are controlled using PID controller okay the popularity of PID controller can be attributed partly to their good performance in a wide range of operating condition and partly to their functional simplicity that allow engineer to operate them in a simple straightforward manner okay to implement the PID controller three parameter must be determined okay the proportional gain okay denoted by KP the integral gain denoted by KI and also the derivative gain denoted by KD okay of course if you use the root locus like the one we do just now okay you just need to add one uh, pole located at origin and then the other uh, complex zero okay basically with that basically will basically when you add that two basically will determine the value of ki and also kp okay and then after that when you adjusting the KD basically you get the value of the KD okay and beside that you can also uh, doing by try and error you can and uh, experiment with the value of KP KI and KD to see how the response is and when you are adjusting the value of KI K, uh, KP and KD basically this is called as PID tuning and there are many methods available to determine acceptable value of the PID gains okay and the process of determining the gain is often called PID tuning a common approach to tuning is to use manual PID tuning method whereby the PID controller gains are obtained by trial and error with minimal analytical analysis using step response obtained via simulation okay that's why sometimes when we have a process it is required from us to get the model of the process because once we get the model of the process okay if we want to de uh, use if we want to design a PID controller okay we can use the simulation to try uh, to see the response of the uh, system 
when we applying the PID controller with different gains. Okay, PID gains. But if you don't model the system, basically, you need to try it by doing experiment with the actual system. Or in some cases, actual testing on the system and deciding on the gain based on the observation and experience. A more analytical method is known as the ziegler nicholas tuning method. Okay, ziegler nicholas providing a method for you to tune the PID. Okay, the ziegler nicholas tuning method actually has several variations. Even ziegler nicholas has come out with several variations of methods which we can choose. The only thing here we discuss in this section, a ziegler nicholas tuning method based on open loop response to a step input and a related ziegler nicholas tuning method based on closed loop response to a step input. The uh, simplest approach in tuning is the manual tuning. Okay. With this approach, basically what we need to do, okay, the first thing when we do simulation or experiment, okay, to determine the value KI, KD, and also KP, okay, first of all, we set the KI and KD equal to zero, okay, and then we just play around with the variable K, KP, okay. And then we run our experiment and also sim or simulation. Okay. And this is followed by slowly increasing the gain KP until the output of the closed loop system oscillate just on the edge of stability. Okay. What does this mean? We need to do simulation or you can do experiment. The only thing you vary, you start with the K with the low value, maybe 0 0.1, and then you increase, 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 okay, bit by bit, okay, until you increase the uh, KP, until when you plot the response, until you get the response showing that the system become marginally stable. Marginally stable means the fluctuation, the amplitude of the fluctuation is already constant. Okay? Doesn't increase or doesn't uh, decrease. Okay? So you need to do, you need to increase the value of KP until, until you get the response like that. Okay? Marginally stable. Okay, once you get the, that, uh, that can be done either by simulation or on the actual system, okay, on the actual system basically mean by experiment. Okay, once you get the value of KP, when the system become marginally stable, okay, you take note of that value of the KP. And then after that, reduce the value of the gain KP to achieve what is known as the quarter amplitude decay. Basically, from the value of the KP that you found where the system become marginally stable. Now from that, you just take the quarter of that, which means we just, that value of KP, we divided by four and then use that value for the KP. Okay, that is the amplitude of the closed loop response is reduced approximately to one fourth of the maximum value in one oscillatory period. So a rule of thumb is to start by reducing the proportional gain KP by one half. Okay, of course, uh, just now we say that we we do uh, one fourth. Okay, quarter, but you can also uh, set the KP equal to one half. One half also okay. A half of the maximum KP just now. Okay. So the next step of the design process is to increase the KI and also KD manually to achieve the desired response. And then one we have set the KP either to a quarter or one half. 
and then after that now you play with the KI or KD okay and you see the response how it is when you changing the value of KI and KD okay the, tr the table below describing, uh, describing in general term the effect of increasing KI and KD so actually when you are playing with the this gain either KP, KI or KD okay you will find that some of the performance measure will, will be changing okay for example actually when we are increasing the KP when we increasing the KP basically we will increase the percentage of our shoot and at the same time the steady state error will be decreasing okay so that is the function of the KP okay the only thing settling settling time does not much effect on it okay so basically the KP will increase the uh, percentage of our shoot and will decrease the steady state error so that means the KP will be good because it decreasing the steady state error okay but for in case uh, but for the percentage of our shoot if you have a dam system okay basically it will be good having the KP increase but if your system is already under dam okay you don't need to increase the KP anymore okay because otherwise your percentage of overshoot will be higher okay and then when we increasing the KI the KI is basically the advantage of the KI is basically on the steady state error it will eliminate at all the steady state error so you will have the steady state error equal to zero so that is the contribution the big contribution of the KI okay of course when we increase the KI basically it do back to the percentage of our shoot because the percentage of our shoot will be increasing and it's also bad for the settling time because the settling time will be increasing okay and then if you increase the KD okay when you increase the KD KD actually is good if you have un, uh, under dam system because it will decrease the percentage of our shoot and also it will be decreasing the settling time which is good as well okay but it has no impact on the steady state error okay so that's why now when we combine all the three okay basically we will get the advantage from each one of them okay which at the end we will combine all the advantages okay there uh, there are two important PID controller gain tuning methods were published in 1942 by Ziegler and Nichols okay intended to achieve a fast closed loop step response without excessive oscillation and excellent disturbance rejection okay and the two approach are classified under the general heading of Ziegler Nichols uh, tuning methods okay the first approach is based on the closed loop concept requiring the computation of the ultimate gain and also ultimate period okay the second approach is based on the open loop concept relying on the reaction curve okay uh, maybe the first method we will discuss here ok sekarang dah pukul 12 uh, rasanya kita di discuss that method later on lah next week I think so ada soalan tak tentang this PID ok for those yang datang lewat tadi uh, just nak informing yang mana kita akan postpone the test to 30 hari bulan Mei Okay. The last day of the semester. Okay.